station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? I'm ready for the event. ACR, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Houston ACR. How do you hear me? I have you loud and clear. How me? I have you loud and clear. Thank you. Please stand by for opening remarks. Hi, my name is Anthony Davis. I'm the superintendent of the Syracuse City School District. It is an absolute honor to connect with the International Space Station and one of our very own SCSD alumni, Jeanette Epps. Your contributions to the field of space exploration have been invaluable, and we are proud to have played a small part in your journey to the stars. We have a lot of excited and eager students participating in today's event. With that being said, here's our first question. Hello, my name is Lenika. I go to Van Dyne. This is my question. What was the solar eclipse like for you? Wow, well, the solar eclipse was amazing for us here. What we saw from the International Space Station was the shadow of the moon across them over the sun traveling over the surface of the Earth. And it was a, like a dark shadow that was just moving slowly across the Earth. It was absolutely wonderful and beautiful. Hi, my name is Patricia and I'm from Lemoyne College. And my question is, what type of training did you do to prepare for weightlessness? Well, there's several ways um, that you can prepare for weightlessness. One of the ways that I love to do it was scuba diving. And scuba diving and, and floating here in space, to me, were, are very similar. There were times when I was moving around the station and I felt like I was underwater again, just looking at things and picking up things underwater. Um, almost a, a very similar way to do it. But we also have a giant pool at Johnson Space Center called the Neutral Buoyancy Lab. It's a giant pool. It's 40 feet deep, 100 feet wide, and 200 feet long. And we, what we have in there is a mock-up of the main truss of the International Space Station where a lot of our spacewalks would take place. So I spent about 440 hours underwater practicing spacewalk training. And that was, that's another way to prepare for weightlessness because we practice underwater. We become neutrally buoyant. Hi, my name is Amariana. I attend Brighton Academy. And my question is, how do you sleep in space without floating away? That's a great question. What we have are, we have sleeping bags, and within the sleeping bags, we have straps if we want them. But we have these small crew quarters. It's our little room. It's about the size of a closet, a very small closet. And our sleeping bags are just on one of the walls. And so you zip yourself up in that sleeping bag. And um, I was surprised that I got a very good night's sleep in my bag. I didn't float away. I just kind of floated inside the sleeping bag which is a very nice way to sleep. Hi, my name's Sunette, and I'm a student here at Lemoyne, and I have a question for you. What are some of the more interesting research projects you are doing aboard the International Space Station? Well, that is a great question. Um, we are the hands and the eyes of all the researchers on the Earth, and we have some great projects. Just today, I was working in a facility called the Electrostatic Levitation Furnace, where we look at different materials. Um, and that's on behalf of our uh, colleagues in Japan. Um, the other day I was working on something called the Code Atom Lab, where we can take materials and different particles and we can cool them down to some of the coolest temperatures in the universe. So I got to take that apart and put it back together on behalf of some great researchers over in the United States. So those are super interesting to me, but also the people on board are great experiments too. So we're looking at ways to get the human body to last longer outside of the Earth's protection. So we're looking at bones, we're looking at our heart, we're looking at eyes, we're looking at all different um, aspects of the human body 
in order to figure out great countermeasures to get our basically our physiology to last longer outside of the Earth's protection. Hi, my name is Nagi. I go to Corcoran High School, and my question is, what does it feel like to experience zero gravity? Go Cougars! Um, what it's like to experience um, microgravity, it is very difficult to explain because without any force acting on you, you're just kind of floating. And to me, I feel like there's something weighing me up or, and you were just kind of like my arms naturally go to this position. And so when you have that, it is, um, to me, it's like you become Spider-Man or something because you can do just about any maneuver you want in space without, you gotta be sure not to hit anything. But in general, you, you're just not weighed down by gravity. And for me, it is, Spring, but it's also you have to change the way your brain thinks because up and down and is just different because any wall can turn into up and down um, the wall here on my right or even on the left so it's just uh, you got to change it's an adaptive perspective is what I like to call it but it's also a, a kind of a freeing feeling hi I'm Ryan I'm a student at Lemoyne and my question is in what ways do you work with others aboard the International Space Station? That's a great question. Um, you know, one of the things I usually tell students is that you can be the smartest person in the room, but if you cannot get along with other people, um, you're not going to go very far. And so, I mean, just yesterday, I was working with one of my colleagues aboard, Matt, and we were um, packing up the SpaceX 30 cargo vehicle here and we're closing it up so that um, it can go back to Earth. So we work closely together on many different projects. Um, Matt was even working with me on the Code Atom Lab the other day. Um, Mike, um, he's always here to help with ultrasounds of our eyes, of our jugular veins, different things. So we work very closely together and um, we, we have our crew quarters, our just in one node, and that's one of the modules here on the space station. And we even sleep closely together. So, you know, we, teamwork is a part of what we have to do here in order to get, accomplish the mission of the International Space Station. So it's, it's a part of our job and it's, you know, it's, it's a job requirement. Hi, my name is Matthew. I go to Van Dyne. My question is, can you tell if it's morning or night at the space station? So currently, I don't know if it's day or night outside. I can check that for you, but every 90 minutes we orbit the Earth. We're going about 17,500 miles around the Earth right now. And every 90 minutes we have a sunrise or a sunset. So we're constantly moving. Um, I don't know right now exactly where we are over the Earth, but I can find out a little later. Hi, my name is Bilal Ali, and I'm a student here at Lemoyne. My question is, which college class do you think has helped you most throughout your space mission so far, and why? Well, that's interesting, because I, I really do think that... Um, for me, my education at Lemoyne at the University of Maryland really kind of combined to give me the proper mindset to do research, to become an operational researcher as well. So I think that um, what ends up happening, all the classes that you take from religion classes, philosophy classes, to your core curriculum, the physics, the classical mechanics, quantum mechanics, e &M, every class that you take forms the way that you're going to think about things in the future. You're not going to remember everything, but having the proper mindset to do the research is what is important. Even the, cl the classes that I took undergrad fed into everything that I did in graduate school as well. So don't uh, despise taking, having to take like any religion class, philosophy, art, all that contributes to becoming a better engineer, scientist, because you developing the creative, creative side of your brain helps with the logical side as well. So I can't say that one single class helped me the most. I really do think that a combination of all the classes together help create a mindset that helps you do the research and everything that you do going forward better. 
Hi, my name is Aubrey. I attend Brighton Academy. And my question is, what do you do for fun when you are in space? I work closely with my colleagues here <laughs> and to get a laugh. <laughs> See? So we, we do many things to have fun. Um, you know, during the eclipse, we were all together in one in the cupola there taking photos together. And we had a blast doing that. It was an amazing thing to see. And we did it together. And that'll be a memory that we'll have. We even recently had a colleague who had a birthday just the other day. And not this guy here. <laughs> we had another colleague who had a birthday, and we celebrated his birthday. So it was a lovely time. We also have colleagues in the Russian segment of the International Space Station. And from time to time, we go down there and have dinner with those guys, and they come to our segment to have dinner with us. Um, we can watch movies. We have software that allows us to talk to our families and see them, just like I'm seeing you, you guys are seeing me right now. So we have many different ways to enjoy ourselves while, you know, also working hard. Hi, my name is John. I'm a student at Lemoyne. What was your biggest takeaway from your college experience? For me, the biggest takeaway for me was just the fact that college courses are there to help frame your mind and to help you to teach yourself to learn as well. So everything that you learn there will help you in the future with learning other things, anything, and not necessarily relying on your instructors to learn that, but learning new things on your own and then engaging your professors and engaging the world. I was fortunate in that my undergrad at Lemoyne was Phenomenal classical education. I learned a lot about the arts, a lot about uh, religion, and I, I was a physics major at the time, so I learned a lot about my core curriculum. Um, but also, graduate school, I, I worked with many different students from all over the world. In fact, when I graduated, my colleagues were one was from South Africa and the other person was from South Korea. So you learn a lot of different things. Your mindset changes, and it just teaches you to be a, a lifelong learner. Hi, my name is Mayana. I go to Corcoran, and my question is, how do you maintain physical fitness and muscle strength in space? Well, that is a requirement. It's such a requirement that is a, it's a part of our jobs. And so just this morning, I did what we call weightlifting, but it's really an advanced resistive exercise device. And what that device does is we work against a resistance. It's not like resistance band. It's against a vacuum in this um, cylinder. So every day, we try to get in uh, weightlifting. And then we have a treadmill and a stationary bike for cardio. So almost every single day, we work out to maintain um, top fitness, and it also helps you to feel better. Clear out the cobwebs in your brain after you've, um, you may have had a hard day, whatever, but exercise is the key to maintaining physical health lifelong. Hi, I'm Julie. I'm a grad student here at Lemoyne, currently student teaching. I have a student, Lizzie, who is researching you, and her question is, how did you feel when you learned you would finally be going up in space for this mission? Well, it was surreal, of course. And, you know, I always tell people, told people at that time was that I'll believe it when I'm sitting on the rocket and we're taking off. And one of the most memorable things for me was when we felt the rocket start propelling us up from the Earth into the atmosphere. And it was like a bunch of kids on an amusement park ride, and the screams, if you could hurt us, we were just like kids. It was amazing. So I did not um, necessarily um, get so super excited when I found out. I was, ex I was excited that I got a mission, but it wasn't until I was really in that rocket and we started propelling up from the Earth. Hi, my name is Aries. I go to Van Dyne. My question is, what's the temperature outside of the space station?
Wow, that's a great question. I don't know exactly what the temperature is outside the space station, but it, there is a vacuum out there. And so, you know, maybe I'll have to, you have to, um, we'll have to chat again a little later and I'll get the precise temperature of what it is outside right now. Hi, my name is Harsha. I'm a senior here at Lemoyne College. And my question to you is, how has your engineering background affected the way you maneuver through the intricacies of space exploration? Well, engineering is, to me, is um, a primary thing, not necessarily the only thing, though. I, I think um, a lot of the things that we do, um, you know, I started at, um, in Lemoyne, we made holograms, we had hydrophone sensors that we were making undergrad, and then in graduate school, I was building my own models. And a lot of times up here, we are the hands and the eyes for the engineers and research scientists on the ground. So the equipment that they send up, understanding just how things go together, how to take them apart without breaking them and getting the research and the data out that they need is one of the ways that engineering has helped me out tremendously. And so you can be, a, I'm a engineer, research scientist by trade. We have medical doctors, we have biologists, we have chemists, we have fighter pilot, engineer, computer science wannabes, <laughs> and really computer science people um, here. So we have all kind of people who have made it their lifelong um, goal to, to learn everything and learn how to do everything. So I think for me, the biggest thing that you can take away is, you know, learn your trade, learn it as well as you can, but also be curious about everything else as well. Hi, my name is Javante. I attend Brighton Academy, and my question is, can you feel the spacecraft as it moves through space? Hi there. Can you repeat your question for me? Can you feel the space station as it moves through space? Well, that's a really good question. Actually, we're all moving in the space station at 17,500 miles per hour, so we don't really feel it. But when we look outside and I'm looking at the Earth, um, my brain sees the movement and it, you know you can start feeling that but it's a psychological kind of effect so we really can't exactly feel the space station moving my name is linda lamura and i am the president of lemoyne college it was an honor spending time with you today everyone at lemoyne has enjoyed seeing all that you've accomplished as an alumna you make us all proud we look forward to seeing you when your mission is over and welcoming you back to campus. And of course, fins up. Fins up. Thank you, Dr. Lamar. It has been my pleasure. I really appreciate being able to do this for my alma mater, my hometown, my school district. So thank you for having me, everyone. It's great seeing you, and I look forward to seeing you when I return. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes our event. Thank you to all participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.